In this video on Logical Remote, we're going to take a detailed look at the elements of the control bar. I'm going to go ahead and skip over the View button and the Library button as those have their own videos coming up. But let's start with our transport or navigation, if you will, uh, and playback icons. And those are to the left of the control bar display. And the one on the immediate left of it is your red record button. To the left of that is the go forward button. You might think of that as your play button. And to the left of that is your go to beginning button. The go to beginning button is actually dynamic depending on what else is happening. Let me show you. I'm going to go ahead and hit the go forward or play button here. And you can see the go to beginning button turned into a stop button. So touching that again, I'm back to that go to beginning icon. And that does exactly that. It snaps your playhead back to the beginning of the project. Now, if I hit record, a couple of things are going to happen. Our currently blue colored control bar display is going to turn to red. That's one of three colors. It'll also be yellow if you have solo enabled, which I'll show you in a minute here. Uh, and the metronome will start clicking, and that'll be based on your metronome settings in Logic. So I'm going to go ahead and hit record, and you'll see the go forward button turn green, and the go to beginning button turn to a stop button. And as promised, let me hit a solo button here and you can see yellow. So these are your three colors, yellow, red, and blue for the control bar display. Speaking of the control bar display, let's take a look at that. Across the top, we have our playhead location in Logic's format of bars, beats, 16th notes, and subdivisions of the 16th notes. Beneath that, depending on whether or not you have markers in your project, and I'll show you this in just a moment, you will either get your track information or marker information. Right now we're seeing track information. It says I'm on track five, and that is the record track. So I can navigate track to track via the arrows that are on the left and right center of the end of my control bar display. And you can see the one on the left is lit up. The one on the right is grayed out, if you will, because I'm out of room on the right to move through tracks. It will not go through your auxiliary channel strips. So let me go ahead and tap the left one. And you can see it moved forward. Now I go ahead and tap and hold, and it'll keep scrolling all the way to the left until we run out of channel strips. Conversely, if I tap the right button, we'd go up until our first auxiliary channel strip. So another way to navigate by tracks is go ahead and give the control bar display a long tap. You'll get the drop-down menu with the two tabs. Make sure the track tab is selected and navigate to the track by tapping on its name. Let's go ahead and give the control bar display a longer tap, and we'll get the drop-down bar ruler. Notice I have colored markers. I created and colored these in Logic. That's like they're showing up now in the Logic Remote. But we can also navigate by markers. I can go ahead and get the same drop-down menu, hit the marker tab, tap on a marker I'd like to go to, bam, I'm there. We can also tap on a marker and the playhead snaps the beginning of that marker. Tapping in the bar ruler snaps the playhead immediately to that location. By the way, depending on where my playhead is, if I'm over a marker, you'll see the marker name in the control bar display. Otherwise, it shows a track name. Navigating in the bar ruler is just as simple as holding your finger down and swiping across the glass so we can just scroll like this. Again, you can tap. Takes you right to it. Lastly, you can zoom in and out. Zooming is achieved by two fingers, or I suppose a finger and a thumb and you are moving them away from each other once they're both on the glass, and zooming out is just the opposite motion, two digits coming closer together. And let's go ahead and swipe over to get over to this. Now, let's talk about cycle area. We can see cycle area, we can see the faint gray there, and you can just tap it once, and all of a sudden you get your handle, so you can either change the length of your cycle area, or you can move it, and you can see it became active, and here's my button up here. So I can move this around thusly. Once it's turned off and I want to dismiss that, just tap beneath it here and that'll dismiss it. We can also change the cycle mode from regular cycle. I'm going to give it just a short tap. You can see skip cycle up here. I'm going to touch that. And now we're in skip cycle mode. I'm going to touch it again and we'll get into cycle mode. So that's basically how you can manipulate the cycle area. And by the way, this is where our go to beginning button functions a little differently. You can see if I put it to the right of the cycle area, there's no change. If I put it in the middle of the cycle area, there's no change. But if I put it to the left of the cycle area, you'll now see that the go to beginning button changed its look. So if I tap it now, it takes me to the beginning of the cycle area. Conversely, by the way, the way cycle area works, just hitting play would take you to that location as well. And if we are inside the cycle area, 
tapping the go to beginning once takes us to the beginning of the cycle area and a second time back to the song start or song beginning. So let's move this back over and center it a little better. We have, well, I'm going to dismiss the cycle region. We have our metronome, which just won't work unless we have play as well. And you can certainly have that going on during the music or without the music. And let's go further over to the right and let's take a look at our settings button. And the settings button shows us undo, redo, and we can actually instantiate new tracks, different types, audio, software, external MIDI, and we can duplicate a selected track. You can connect to something. Let me go here and touch. And right now I have two, I have my laptop and my tower both running Logic. And so I could switch from my tower where I am right now to my MacBook Pro if I wanted to, but I don't for the purposes of this demo. So let me go back and make sure we're connected to the tower, the Mac Pro. And here we have our velocity range, which we can adjust. We'll use that for the virtual instruments. You have Logic Remote Help down here and allow iPad to sleep in. If we go ahead and enable Logic Remote Help, you can see that we get online help that allow us to navigate through different elements and find out things we might uh, have questions on. And let's go back into settings again. And allow iPad to sleep is a nice feature because if this is turned on, it will allow your iPad to sleep. If it's turned off, which is a default, it won't allow your iPad to sleep, which is what we want because you need to have it active while you are working. So again, we have undo, redo. We could create a new track of some sort. Let's go ahead and do a new software instrument track for kicks right now. We can undo it and we're back at it here. And then lastly, let's dismiss settings. We have the info button here. And this just gives you quick explanations for various elements of what's happening in Logic. And you can tap that to dismiss it. And that concludes the exciting tour of the control bar and its elements. Hope you got a tip or trick out of it. Thanks for watching. We'll catch you on the next one.